Live from San Jose, California, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in Silicon Valley, San Jose is the Big Data SV, Big Data Silicon Valley in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. Uh, this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage over the next two days. We got wall-to-wall -wall interviews with thought leaders, experts breaking down the future of big data, future of analytics, future of the cloud. I'm John Furrier with my co-host George Gilbert with Wookie Bond. Our next guest is uh, Jan Hao's son, who's the co-founder and CTO of Transwarp Technologies. Welcome to theCUBE. You were on during the, um, 166 days ago, I noticed, uh, on, on the queue previously, but now you've got some news. So yeah. let's get the news out of the way. What are you guys announcing here this week? Yes, so we're announcing uh, 5.0, the, the latest version of uh, Transport Data Hub. Uh, so in this version, uh, we, uh, we, we call it uh, uh, probably revolutionary product because we, the first one is we embedded Kubernetes in our product. Uh, so we'll allow people to isolate uh, different kind of workloads uh, using Docker and containers. And uh, uh, we also provide a scheduler to uh, uh, better support um, mixed workloads. And the second is we are uh, building um, uh, a, can, uh, a set of tools allow people to um, build their warehouse and uh, migrate from existing uh, or traditional data warehouse to Hadoop. And we are also providing people uh, capability to uh, build a uh, data, where, data, data mart, actually. It's, uh, it allows you to interactively query the data. So we build a column store in memory and on SSD, and we uh, totally write the whole SQL engine. That is a very tiny SQL engine that allows people to query data very quickly. And uh, so today, uh, that tiny SQL engine is uh, like uh, about five to 10 times faster than Spark 2.0. We also allow people to build cubes uh, on top of Hadoop. And uh, then uh, once the cube is built, the uh, SQL performance, like the TBCH performance, is uh, uh, about 100 times faster than existing database or existing Spark 2.0. So it's uh, super fast. <laughs> uh, and uh, in uh, actually, we found a pilot customer, so they uh, replaced Teradata uh, with our software to um, build the data mart. Um, and we already migrate uh, 700 uh, reports to from Teradata to our product. So the problem is if it's very good. <laughs> and the, the first one is we are providing a tool for people to uh, build the um, machine learning pipelines. And we are leveraging TensorFlow, MXNet, and also Spark uh, for people to uh, visualize <laughs> to the, the pipeline and uh, to build the uh, uh, data mining uh, workflows. So uh, this is uh, kind of like uh, data science tools. Uh, it's uh, very easy for people to use. Okay, so take a minute to explain, just first, because that was great. You got the performance there, that's the news out of the way. Take a minute to, to explain Transwarp, your value proposition, and when people engage you as a customer. Yeah, so um, the pe um, people choose our product uh, the major reason is our compatibility to uh, like Oracle, the DB2, and uh, Teradata SQL uh, syntax. Uh, because um, you know they have built a lot of uh, applications on top of those databases. So when they migrate to Hadoop, they, uh, they don't want to rewrote the whole program. So our compatibility, SQL compatibility is a big advantage to them. Uh, so th this is the first one. You know, we also support full ANSID. Uh, and uh, distributed transactions on top of Hadoop, so that uh, a lot of uh, applications can be um, migrated to our product uh, uh, with few modification or without any changes. So this is the first uh, our advantage. Uh, the, s the second is um, uh, because we are providing an, uh, even the best uh, uh, streaming engine, uh, that is actually derived from Spark. Uh, so we apply this um, technology to IoT applications. Uh, you know, the IoT applications, uh, they are uh, they need a very low latency, but they uh, also need uh, very complicated models on top of streams. So that's why uh, we are providing full SQL support and machine learning support on top of streaming uh, events. And we are also using even driven technology to reduce the latency to uh, five to 10 milliseconds. So th this is the second uh, reason people choose our product. And then we, 
today we are announcing 5.0, and uh, I think the people have found more reasons to choose our product. So you have the, the compatibility with SQL, you have the tooling, and now you have the performance. Right. So the kind of the triple, triple threat there. So what's the customer saying? When you go out and talk with uh, your customers, what's the, the, the view of the current uh, landscape for customers? What, what are they solving right now? What are the key challenges and pain points that customers have today? You, mm, you, we have customers in like more than uh, 12 vertical segments, and uh, in different verticals, they have different pain points, actually. So uh, take uh, one example, in financial services, and uh, the main pain point for them is to migrate existing legacy uh, applications to Hadoop. You know, they have accumulated a lot of data and uh, the performance is very bad uh, using a legacy database. So they need a high performance Hadoop and a Spark to speed up the, perform the uh, like reports. So, um, um, uh, but in, diff in another vertical, like in uh, uh, logistics and transportation uh, and uh, IoT, uh, they the pain point is to uh, find a very low latency streaming engine. Uh, at the same time, uh, they need a very complicated programming model to uh, write their applications. So uh, another example, like uh, in, um, in like public sector, they actually need a very uh, complicated and large scale search engine. Uh, they need to build uh, analytical capability on top of such engine. They can search the results and uh, and that the result in the same time. Yuan Ho, as always, whenever we get to interview you on the cube, you toss out these like gems, sort of like you know diamonds are are, are like big rocks that under millions of years and the incredible pressure have been like squeezed down into these incredibly valuable kind of mm. you know value sort of minerals with, with lots of goodness in them. So I need you to unpack that diamond back into a, something that we can like make sense out of, um, or I should say uh, that, that's more accessible. The, you've done something that none of the Hadoop distro guys have, have managed to do, which is to build um, databases that are not just decision support, but can handle, handle OLTP, that can handle uh, you know, yeah. operational applications. Right. Um, you've done the streaming. Um, you've done you know, what even Databricks can't do without even trying any other stuff, which is getting the streaming down to event at a time. Yeah. Um, let's step back from you know, all these amazing things and tell us what was the secret sauce that let you build a platform this advanced? So actually we are driven by our customers. And uh, we, we do see the trends, uh, that people are looking for better solutions. You know, there are a lot of pain to set up a uh, Hadoop cluster to use the uh, Hadoop technology. So that, uh, that's why we found it's very uh, meaningful and also very necessary for us to build a SQL uh, database on top of Hadoop. And uh, uh, like, um, so if, uh, quite a lot of customers uh, in FSI, they ask us to provide uh, asset uh, and this uh, transaction capability on top of Hadoop because they have to guarantee the consistency of their data. Otherwise, they cannot uh, use the technology. At the risk of interrupting, maybe you can tell us why um, others have built the analytic databases on top right. of Hadoop to give you know the familiar SQL access um, and obviously have a desire also to have transactions Right. next to it so you can inform a transaction decision with mm -hmm. the analytics. One of the questions is, how did you combine the two capabilities? I mean, it only took Oracle like 40 years. Right, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, actually, uh, our transaction capability is, um, uh, is only for analytics, you know. Uh, so um, this OITP capability, uh, it, it, it is, um, not for uh, short-term uh, transactional applications. It's for uh, data warehouse kind of workloads. Okay, so, so when you're ingesting. Yes, when you're ingesting, when you modify your data in batch, okay. you have to guarantee the consistency. Okay. So uh, that's the OLTP capability. Uh, but then, um, uh, we are also uh, building another um, um, distributed storage and a distributed database uh, that are providing uh, 
lightweight or a TP capability. That means you can do concurrent transactions uh, on that uh, database. But uh, we are still developing that software uh, right now. Um, today, our product is providing uh, the distributed transaction capabilities for people to actually build their warehouse. You know, uh, uh, quite a lot of people believe data warehouse do not need a uh, transaction capability, but we found a lot of people modify their data in data warehouse. You know, they are loading their data continuously to data warehouse, like the uh, CRM tables, customer information, they can be changed over time. So uh, every day, people need to update or change the data. That's why we have to provide uh, a transaction capability in data warehouse. Okay. And then, so then, well, tell us also, because the streaming problem is, you know, we're told that roughly two-thirds of Spark deployments um, use streaming as, you know, a workload. Um, and the, the biggest knock on Spark is that it can't process one event at a time. You know, you've got to do a, a little batch at them. Um, tell us some of the use cases that uh, can take advantage of doing one event at a time and how you solve that problem. Yeah, so uh, the first use case we encounter is the uh, anti-fraud uh, or fraud detection um, application in FSI. So, you know, uh, whenever you swap your credit card, um, the bank needs to tell you uh, if the uh, transaction is uh, a fraud or not uh, in a few milliseconds. Uh, so, um, but if, we are if you are using Spark Streaming, it will usually take 500 milliseconds uh, so and um, the latency is too high for such kind of application, and uh, uh, that's why we have to provide a event per, uh, uh, per time, uh, so that means even driven processing uh, to detect the fraud, so that uh, we can uh, interrupt the transaction uh, in a few milliseconds. So that's one uh, kind of application. The other kind of um, requirement come from IoT applications. So we already deployed our stream streaming framework in uh, uh, large um, uh, manu manufacturer um, uh, factory. So uh, they have to detect the uh, uh, malfunction of their equipments in a uh, very short time. Otherwise, th th it may explode. So um, if you if you uh, so if you are using Spark Streaming, probably you when, when you uh, submit your application, it will take you hundreds of milliseconds. And when you finish your detection, it, may, it usually takes uh, a few seconds. So that will, that will be too long for such kind of application. And uh, that's why we need a low latency streaming engine. But uh, uh, you can see it, it is OK to use Storm or Flink, right? And the problem is uh, we found it is very they need a very complicated programming model that like they are uh, going to solve um, uh, equation uh, on the streaming events. Uh, they need to do the FFT transformation. Uh, and they are also uh, um, asking to run some uh, linear regression or some uh, uh, like a neural network on top of events. So that's why we uh, have to provide a like SQL interface, and uh, we are also embedding the CEP capability into our streaming engine, so that you can read, a, you can use a pattern to match the events and uh, to send the alerts. So, SQL to to get a set of events and maybe join some, and the complex event processing CEP to say, does this fit a pattern I'm looking for? Yes. Okay, and so and then with the lightweight OLTP. Um, that or in any other new projects you're looking at, tell us perhaps the new use cases you're, you'd be appropriate for. Yes, so that's our future product, actually. Uh, so we're going to solve the problem uh, of um, a large scale OTP uh, transaction problems. Uh, like, um, so you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, in China, um, there's so many population, like in, in public sector or in banks, they need to build um, high, highly scalable transaction systems so that they can uh, support uh, very high concurrent transactions at the same time. So that's why we are building such kind of uh, technology. You know, in the past, people just divide the transaction uh, into multiple databases, like uh, multiple Oracle instances or multiple MySQL instances. Uh, but the problem is 
uh, if the application is simple, you can uh, very easily uh, divide a transaction over the multiple instances of uh, databases. But uh, if the application is very complicated, especially when the ISV uh, already wrote the applications based on Oracle or uh, traditional database, they already depend on the transaction systems. So uh, that's why we, uh, we have to build a um, uh, same kind of transaction systems uh, so that we can support their legacy applications, but they can scale to hundreds of nodes and they can scale to millions of transactions per second. On the transactional stuff? Yes. Has, just correct me if I'm wrong, I know we're running out of time, but I thought Oracle only scales out when you're doing decision support work, not when you're doing OLTP. Not that it, that it can only, that it can maybe stretch to 10 nodes or something like that. Am I, am I mistaken? That yes, they, they can scale to 16 to or 32 nodes. For transaction work. Uh, for for transaction work. But, uh, so that's the theoretical limit. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, like a Google um, F1 and a Google Spanner, they can s uh, scale to hundreds of nodes. Um, but, uh, you know, the latency is higher than Oracle because uh, you have to uh, use distributed protocol to communicate with uh, multiple nodes. So the latency is higher. But on Google? Yes. On uh, Google. On Google. The latency is higher on the Google? Because it has to go like yeah, all the way to or Europe. Or, yeah, like back. or Oracle or, or Google? Google. The latency is uh, Google. So okay. You, uh, because you, like, if you are using two-phase uh, commit protocol, you have to uh, talk to multiple nodes uh, to broadcast your um, request to multiple nodes and then uh, wait for the uh, feedback. So that means you, uh, uh, you have a high much, higher la much higher latency. Uh, but it, it's necessary to maintain the uh, consistency. So uh, in a distributed OLTP databases, the latency is usually higher, but the concurrency is also much higher, and the scalability is much uh, uh, better. So that's a problem. You've stretched beyond what Oracle's done. Yes. So. Uh, because the customer can, tol uh, can tolerate the uh, higher latency, but uh, they, uh, they need to scale to uh, uh, millions of transactions per second. So uh, that's why we have to build a distributed database. Okay, this for this reason, we're going to have to have you back for like maybe five or ten consecutive <laughs> segments, you know, <laughs> maybe starting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get you back for Kay. sure. Final question for you. What are you excited about um, from a technology in the landscape what, as you look at open source, you're working with Spark, you mentioned Kubernetes, you have microservices, all the cloud. What are you most excited about right now in terms of new technology that's going to help simplify and scale uh, with low latency um, the databases, the software? What's the, because you've got IoT, you've got autonomous vehicles, you have all this data. What's, what are you excited about? You so uh, actually, so this technology is we, uh, we already uh, solve these problems actually. But uh, um, I, I think the most exciting thing is uh, we found, um, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, actually that, uh, there's uh, two trends. The first trend is uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we found it's very exciting to uh, find more um, competition framework coming out like the uh, AI framework like TensorFlow, MXNet, uh, Torch, and uh, like such kind of like tens of such uh, uh, machine learning frameworks are coming out. So they are solving different kinds of problems like uh, uh, facial uh, recognition from video and uh, images, uh, uh, like um, uh, human uh, computer interactive uh, uh, interactions using uh, a voice, using uh, audio. So it's very exciting, I think. Uh, but for um, and then, and also it's very, uh, we, are, we found it's very excited we are embedding this, we're combining these technologies together. So that's why we combine, we are using Kubernetes, you know. We didn't use uh, Yarn because it cannot support TensorFlow or other uh, framework. But uh, you know, if you are uh, using uh, containers uh, and uh, you are, if you have a good scheduler, you can schedule any kind of f uh, computation frameworks. So. Uh, we uh, we find it's very uh, interesting to um, to have these new frameworks, and we can combine together to solve different kinds of problems. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Yeah. It's an operating system world we're living in now. It's a great time uh, to be a technologist. Certainly the opportunities are out there uh, and we're breaking it down here inside theCUBE, live in Silicon Valley with the best tech executives, best thought leaders and experts here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with uh, George Gilbert. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Thank <laughs> you.